in the earlier video about um, taking MIDI from Sibelius to GarageBand and generally sharing material around via MIDI files, we um, we talked about the idea of making backing tracks in GarageBand that can be played over and over. Um, and that gives students somewhere to start with improvisation and the like. Uh, I also mentioned the uh, loop libraries that I had prepared on particular songs. I gave you the When Doves Cry example in about four weeks ago. Um, and so this video is just to show you quickly how to make those yourself. It was something that I mentioned on the day, but it's uh, quite a complicated path to, to actually get at those loops once you've made them. So we're going to imagine here that this is um, maybe some repertoire that you've been studying or maybe you did a classroom arrangement like I did of the Rojas that we studied in class. Um, you've done an arrangement of it and now you want the students to expand that improvisation um, on their own on their computer. So what we can do is um, rather than just having uh, the straight uh, uh, improvisation we can cut this up and make loops out of bits of it. So to do that we can simply click on any one track and just press Command and T and it cuts that track at the point that the playback line is at at the moment. So I'm going to do that there, I'm going to do it there, Oops. click on it, and there, so now I've got a two bar loop in that bit and then maybe I'll go back here and I'll make a two bar loop there. So to now take one of those loops and add it into the loop library, this is the highly complicated not at all intuitive part of it, you go edit add to loop library nice and easy. So this will automatically recognize um, the key if you've set a key, or at least whether it's major or minor, and then that will mean that if the loop is dragged into another project, so you've got to mute Facebook, uh, if the loop is dragged into another project um, that you can, um, it will automatically change to the key of that project. Naming the loop is really important. Um, because if you're going to create 30 loops, you want them all to be easily found at once. So I always take, so let's say the piece of music is Hard Boiled Overture, which was the Rojas piece. I'd go HBO. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? Um, yes, they, they make quality television and it's the name of a piece of music. I go HBO and then say what the loop is. So this is going to be Chime Synth. Uh, part one or something like that. You've got a relatively limited number of characters that you can write in the name so don't muck around for too long. Um, and just keeping those initials will mean later on when you've created 20 loops uh, for this project that someone can then simply uh, do a search for HBO and they'll get all of the loops showing at once in GarageBand. Uh, so the next thing to do now is just to check that you're happy with the descriptors. A loop will mean that it automatically plays over and over. A one shot will just play once and then stop. Um, and this should all automatically be correct because it's just copying what you've set up in um, GarageBand. These mood descriptors frankly really don't matter, but if you can be bothered to waste half an hour of your life putting them in for each of your loops, then go for it. It's really for people who don't understand musical terms to find um, music via mood, something which we'll actually talk about later in this um, lecture anyway. So once you've done that, click Create, and it's extremely quick, takes about a second to do that, and then it's added down here in the loop browser at the bottom right-hand corner. Again, just go and do it again for the next one. Oops, sorry. HBO Chime Synth 2, so on and so forth. Okay, so these all now appear here in my browser here, but what if I want them to appear in, uh, in my uh, students' computers or in a lab like this? So all you need to do then is go to the following location. It is a little bit difficult to remember, so I'll just go through it slowly. Firstly, you need to get into your user library. By default, in um, the latest version of OS X, the library does not show under your user. So if you open up a window, your user is whatever you've called yourself on your computer. I'm Jay Humberstone on mine. You'll have a similar name, Schnooky, whatever it is you called yourself. And by default, on the latest version of OS X, the library doesn't show. But you can still get to the library by holding down Option and going to um, and, li and then library will show here and will get you into a folder. And then after that you go to audio. 
Inside audio, you go to Apple Loops. Inside Apple Loops, you go to User Loops. And inside that, you go to Single Files. And there are the two uh, loops that I just made. And you can now drag those out of there and into another folder and share those with students as digital resources to begin composition processes with. If you're working on a Windows computer rather than in uh, on a Mac, then you can um, uh, use a program called Acid to make uh, loops, uh, and it will even allow you to drag um, any audio in and beat map it, which means find out where, tell it where the beats go in that little bit of audio. So very useful for remixing and things. Um, and as you're probably aware. Once things are beat mapped or turned into loops, again, I said before, you, if you drag it into a project with a different key, it will automatically change key. It's same with tempo. So you drag it into a faster project, or the student chooses to speed up or slow down the project, all of the sound will be changed. It doesn't matter whether it's MIDI or audio, it'll do all of that stuff. Uh, on that note, if you want to do any more advanced um, uh, beat mapping on a Mac, there's an application called Loop Utility, uh, which should be, I would imagine, in this uh, lab because we've got Logic installed in here, Apple Loops Utility. And again, you don't have to drag an actual loop into there. You can drag any old bit of audio, and then you simply tell it that's so many beats, this is the key that it's in, this is the time signature, and it will in it put all of that uh, metadata inside the um, inside the file so if you want to get quite advanced on this and for those of you who are thinking about doing the remix part of the uh, popular music studies course uh, project then that's a really nice tool to know about as well okay that's uh, making loops and also making templates uh, for GarageBand I think the same processes apply to most other sequencing programs